Have you ever sat in a stagnant pool, rotting vegetation around you, flies, mosquitoes, and you are trying desperately to get out, but every step is hindered by thick mud sucking you under? Well, thankfully, I haven't and most likely you haven't either. But I'm sure you'll agree there are times when life just kind of feels like that. You know how it is. You just get over one setback when a new one seems to loom in front of you. And no matter how hard you try to make a go of it, something always seems to get in the way. And the worst of it is, you look around you and everyone else seems to be doing just fine. Other people are prospering, but you, well, you are still stuck in this stagnant pool, helplessly waiting for someone to come. And the worst of it is, people keep saying things like, God bless you, but you don't feel all that blessed. In fact, you quite often feel abandoned by God. You know, it's times like these where we find ourselves spiritually tested to the max. And the truth is, how we endure the stagnant pool determines not only the outcome, but our character as well. Yep, stagnant pools, detestable as they are, turn out to be the best proving grounds in the making or breaking of our character. So, how do we endure? How do we keep the faith without going under? How do we keep the smile on our face and the hope in our heart when all we see is mud and rot? Okay. If you haven't read the story of Joseph, then you pause this video right this minute and flip the pages of your Bible to Genesis 37. Read the story of Joseph and you will not only be encouraged to endure, but you'll also be equipped. But that's not all you'll discover. You'll also find that God doesn't allow trials and stagnant pools to come about just so that we can be miserable and he can be entertained. He actually allows trials often as a means to bless us. One of the verses in this story got my attention and that's what got me thinking on this topic of blessings in stagnant pools. Okay, so in chapter 45, verses 5 and 8, Joseph says something very interesting to his brothers. Take a look at this. Okay, check this out. Verse 5. Now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. Hmm. Then, in verse 8, So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God, and he hath made me a father to Pharaoh, and lord of all his house, 
and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. So, quite simply, his brothers might have sinned against Joseph, but God used that trial to bring about not only fame and success to Joseph, but used it to preserve the future of his chosen people. Nothing was wasted. No matter what Joseph had to endure to bring about his ultimate success and good fortune, God was in control all the way through. And as for Joseph, well, he persevered through every unfortunate trial. He kept the faith, ran the race, used his time in the stagnant pool to allow God to shape his character. But one of the most important things to note is that throughout his ordeal, God was with Joseph. Remember that. Don't forget that very important detail. In chapter 39, verse 21, it says, But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. So you see, even in the midst of trials, even in the muck of your stagnant, yucky pool, keep your eyes on God. Keep your focus on him. Learn to recognize the little blessings that he provides, even in your darkest moments. Keep the faith. Don't give up and don't give in. Understand that God has allowed your stagnant pool for a reason. He wants to grow you, to perfect you. And believe it or not, he wants to bless you. But you won't recognize the blessings if you are trying to fight against the mud in your stagnant pool. Use that time to learn more of God and to learn more of who you are in him. Keep looking up because you won't see the silver lining if you are staring down at the mud. Okay, I got a PS for you. As I was getting ready to write up my notes for this video, I received um, one of my <laughs> one of my daily Bible verses by email, and it just so happened to be the perfect verse for this topic. James one chapter. <laughs> James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord had promised to them that love him. Doesn't get better than that, does it? <laughs> Okie dokie, that's it. God bless you. Till next time.